Hello guys, I hope you're well. Uh, like we already said that I will send you guys a video of our GEC, the one that we've been practicing throughout the week. So there it is. I'm going to do this in four videos for this paper. The first 15 questions and on a, another video, again, 15 questions until we get to question 60. So this will be the first one and the others will follow. Okay, let's just swim o'clock, get started. Okay. Remember, I said some of these questions, they are just going to need us to be straightforward. Put something in the calculator so you can see what the number is, right? So like, for instance, in this one, they're saying which word best describes a negative square root 3, right? In this case, is 3 a perfect square? It's not. But anyway, even if we put in the calculator, we'll see that it will give us a rational number. When we press our SD, you can see that this number gives us that much right so when you look at that calculator that number it doesn't make sense it has so many commas after i mean it has so many decimals and this not this uh, recurring uh, decimal numbers are not even recurring correct that's seven three two zero five it is not recurring so meaning this number it is irrational number it becomes an irrational number because it doesn't even re okay okay then coming to this second one and then they're saying, given 12, 18, 27, what is the LCM? Meaning the lowest common multiple. And I said, whenever we're working with multiples, what do we do? We write these numbers given here as our prime products, right? How do you find a prime product? We go to your calculator. You say 12. That's the first number, correct? 12 equals sign, shift, and then fact. So meaning 12 is 12 is equals to square root of 2 multiplied by 3. And then when you go to 18, it will give us, let's quickly check. 18 is 18 equals sign, shift, fact, it is 2 times 3 squared. And then the last number, it is 27 there. So if you do the same, you'll see that 27 will give us uh, square root of, I mean, 3 cubed, correct? So now LCM, it is lowest common multiples, right? So now which multiples do we see here? We see multiples of what? Multiples of 2 and multiples of 3. So we're going to have 2 multiplied by 3. And then I'm now going to focus on the exponent. So now remember, because it's the lowest common multiple, when looking at number 2, we need to check which one has the highest exponent. So between these two twos, which one is the highest exponent? Is the one there on top right? So we have two there. And then for this one, remember if there's nothing written on this three, there it means there's one. So between this three on the top and the three on the bottom, and the last three at the bottom, which one has the, the highest exponent? Is this one with the three there, right? So we're going to have that there. So finally, put that in a calculator. It is two squared multiplied by three cubed. Put this in the calculator, it's going to give us 108, 108, meaning our answer there is B. And then on to the other one. Okay, let's continue. So now for this one here, we're given 8 over 30, and the other number is 12 over 36, right? So now they're saying here again, we should find... Uh, the highest common factor. So highest common factor is quite different from the lowest common multiple. Correct? So now at the highest common factor, which number is common here? The highest common factor. Quickly, what are the highest common factors? Let's write 8 quickly down. 8, it is 2 cubed, 12 again on the calculator. Let's put in the calculator quickly and check how much it gives us. 12 equals sign, shift, fact. It is 2, 2 squared. We have 2 squared times 3. Let's quickly get off 30 and see how much 30 gives us as well as 36. 80 equals sign, shift, fact. There it is. We have 2, 3, 5, 2 times 3 times 5. And then 36, it should give us 6 squared or something like that, but that's Check it for ourselves. So we have 36 equals sign, shift, 
Perfect. So two squared, three squared, two squared, three squared. So for the numerator part, which numbers are common here? There's only one number common, right? That number is how much? It is two. And then between these two twos, we need to now, because it is highest common factor, this one is highest common factor. So I'm going to look for the what? Lowest exponent. So the lowest exponent here is how much? It is two. Then go into our denominator. Our denominator is this one. It's 13, 36. Which numbers are common when you come to this one? Quickly, the numbers common, it is two. We have two there. And then what the other number? Three is also common, right? We have three there. So now, two squared is how much? It is four over two times three is how much? Six. And then when you simplify, this, it's going to give us how much? Two over three. So now our answer for this one here is A. Right? So remember, even when we're dealing with this block here, we should also look for the highest common factor. And the highest common factor, remember, we look for the similar numbers. We have two, two. And because it's highest common factor, we're going to look for the lowest exponent. So between these two twos, which one is its lowest exponent? Remember here, we have one. So two between two and one, which one is, is, is less? It is one. And I'm going to look between these two threes. Between these, remember that we have one. So which one has the lowest exponent? It is one. So when you put the whole thing in a the calculator, then you realize that we have two over three there. Coming to this one here, again, which one represent direct proportion? By now, I think we can all agree that it is C here. Whenever we have a straight line going up, remember is what? Direct proportion, right? And then in this case, if ever it moves this way, it means what? Indirect proportion. And then... B, it will be exponential. D will be vertical. But that we already spoke about a long time ago. Now let's move on to number five. On number five, they're saying to us, a car traveling at the speed of 120 meters per hour, a certain distance is in that much. Remember, if ever we have minutes there, we need to... Uh, convert this minutes in, into hours so we're going to have 45 for us to convert into hours we're going to divide it by 60 right by 60 minutes so when you put this in the calculator let's see how much it gives us 45 over 60 this will then give us 0, 0,75 0, 0,75 all right, so two comma two hours plus zero comma seven five is going to give us two comma seven five hours. All right, so those are the hours that we have that the car traveled, and then I say in the car then traveled the same distance, right, in three hours and twelve minutes. Again, let's check how many hours is that. So we have. 3 is fine. Let's check 12. 12 over 60. How much is that? We go into our calculator. We have 12 over 60. It will then give us 0, 0,2. So this 0, 0,2 are going to edit with 3, right? So it's going to give us 3, 2. But now remember they said this, in this time we need to find what was the distance covered when the speed was that much? So then we draw our triangle. We know in our triangle we have speed there, we have distance, and then we have time. Because already they give us the speed and the time, we need to look for the distance. So distance, it is equals to speed times time. Therefore, in this case, the speed is 120 multiplied by 2, 7, 5 equals sine, and then let's check how much that gives us. I'm going to have 120 times 2, 7, 5. So, meaning the distance here, it was 3,000, I mean, 330 kilometers. So, now when we have 330 kilometers, 
Then they said it traveled the same distance, right? But now the time was three hours, uh, three comma two hours. So remember, we converted that twelve minutes. So now, what is the constant speed now? So what are you going to look for for the speed? What do we have? We have now the distance and the time. How much is it? Okay, let's write it down quickly. So I'm going to say we want the distance. We want the speed. Speed is equals to d over t equals sine. The distance we said is three hundred thirty. Now, how much is the time? Three comma two hours. And then we put this now in our calculator and check how long it, how fast the car was traveling. Divided by three comma two. Then our answer it is. 103,3 so our answer for this one is A right and then on to this one now they're saying this much 5,265 is invested right meaning that's the principal amount 5,265 it is invested and it was invested with a 12% interest per annum. And it was compounded, right? Compounded. And then the interest, okay, it was over 24 months. 24 months, you need to convert it to two years. So 24 months is how many years? Two years, right? So you want to know how much interest was earned. So now remember, in this case, it is, they said it's a compound interest. So our formula is going to be what? P is equal to uh, A. A is equal to P1 plus I exponent of N. So the amount is equal to the principal is 5,265. 1 plus the interest there, it is 12. 12% means 1200, right? And then over how long? Two years. And then straightforward, the calculator, 265, close bracket, we have 1 plus 12 over 100, over close bracket, and then we have square, squaring it. So our answer there is 6,000. 6, 604 6, 604 and then we have that so now after you have invested this is how much money you'll be having right in the account staying stayed there in the account but now what they asked, they wanted to know how much was the interest, meaning how much money was earned. So initially, remember, how much was your money? Your money was this much, right? So how much money have you in, uh, earned now? I mean, I'm going to take this final amount and then I'm going to subtract it by the money that you invested in. So uh, when you do that, you will realize that you're going to get 1,339.42 cents meaning our answer in this case it is d right let's move on now this one is associative we spoke about this this is similar to c right and then other questions such as this one we said just put it in the calculator like number eight we just put that in the calculator So we have three times negative two plus six close bracket minus two five minus four plus one. How much is this? It's eight. So some of the, these questions are quite straightforward. We just put them in the calculator and then we get the answer. Remember, guys, we don't have to work hard when we can work less. We just want to work smart, but the hard work should always be the consistency and discipline must always be there. But there are some questions that don't really need us to think even hard. Put them straight in the calculator. So now they're saying what are the additive and multiplicative inverses of negative two, right? 
So now additive means which number if we add or minus negative 2 with, it gives us a 0. So which number is that? Which number is that? That number is 2, right? We so saw 2 minus 2 is going to give us that. And then again, we're talking about that was additive. So now multiplicative, which number if we multiply negative 2 with, it gives us positive 1. So which number is that? Negative 1 over 2. So now looking at this, where do we have something like that? Where we have 2 and negative that it is D, right? Yes. Again, straightforward. Do we have to calculate this? No. Put in a calculator. Check how much it gives you. Do we have to calculate this? No. Put in a calculator. Check how much it gives you. Such questions. 12. Put in a calculator and check how much it gives you. All right? And then here, we don't need a calculator because we don't have A and C in a calculator. So now, in this case, we have A cubed multiplied by A squared C. And then now, in this case, Remember, a times a, what do we do? We add the exponents, right? So we're going to have a exponent 5. We have nothing multiplied by c, so it's going to give us c. Which, so which one is our answer here? It is a, right? Yep. And then I'm going to 14 now. 14, they're saying that we should simplify this. Remember, whenever we can have our exponent as a variable, maybe a x y remember we need to write this number as a as an exponent as well right so how do we do that again prime product we go to your calculator we have four equal sign shift fact meaning is going to be two squared right so it is two squared and then we have x plus one over two exponent of x, meaning now that we have exponent to exponent, remember I have to multiply this thing in now. So when you multiply it in, we're going to get two exponent of two x plus two over two exponent of x. So now remember, because we have the same basis, what do we do now? We're going to take the x on our denominator, all right? Plus two, this x here, we're going to write it there, but remember the sign here was positive. So now if it goes there, now it's going to become what? Negative. And then now finally our answer, we're going to have two, two x minus x is what? It's x then plus two. So which one is our answer here? It is C. And then last question for the first part, we have 15. So how do we write? A exponent of 1, we spoke about this, is going to be A, right? And our exponent there remains to be 1. It just changes it. If it was negative, it's going to be positive. So here, our B is also the same thing, right? And then now we have two different uh, lowest common denominators. So we have to get the common denominator. So how do we do that? The first part, it doesn't have a B, right? So we're going to multiply it with a B. Whatever we're doing on a denominator, we should also do a, add our numerator. And then we have plus one over B now. So this B doesn't have what? Doesn't have A. So we have to multiply it with A. Whatever we did on a denominator, we also do add our numerator. And then now, one times B is what? B over A times B is AB plus one times A is A, then B times a is a b. Are we having the same denominators now? When you do that, what can we do? We can add our numerators, right? So now finally our answer here is going to be uh, b plus a over a b. So which one is this? It is our b. And then that is that for the first part. More is to come. Sharp, sharp.